Hello, Serge here from the Backyard Driving Range. All right, we have a question that came in to us from TK in Minnesota. And TK says, Serge, I've watched your daily videos for some time now. What I have never seen you talk about is someone who is ambidextrous. I am left-handed, or left-hand dominant, but I golf right-handed. I struggled for about four years time hitting my driver with my right arm lagging in the background and slicing all my shots. Last year I finally got my driver to go straight but I had it cut short of perfecting it due to surgery on my left shoulder. Is there some trick or routine to help keep the driver going straight? Love your videos and a PPGS swing. Again TK in Minnesota. Okay so you're saying that uh, TK is saying he's ambidextrous and uh, which means he can work equally with both hands and arms which is good and so you play right you play right-handed so your lead arm is your left arm and then you had some it was going pretty good hitting the driver until you had some shoulder surgery okay is there some tricks or routine to help keep the driver going straight well number one is let's start off with the golf club itself many times or, or at least by what you're saying I'm going to I'm going to say that you only talk about the driver, so I, I have to make an assumption here that, that very likely the rest of your clubs in your bag are, are hitting fairly well. So uh, if that's the case, I'm going to say if most everything in your bag you're hitting fairly well, to maybe even good, then the one, the one bad boy in the bag, I'm going to have to say is it might not be the Indian, it might be the arrow. All right, And I think that's always the best place to start especially when you only have one or two clubs that are giving you a problem, it's very likely not you, the golfer. It is the, the tool, the golf club. Best place to start that is find a good swing surgeon certified fitter. Go get your club checked uh, and, and, and bring it to them. Today's drivers, most cases, are built way too long for folks. And, and even, even three woods considerably are way shorter very, as, as relates to the driver. And that's why some people still hit... Still hit uh, even the fairway woods better. That, naturally, many times I'll have people say, oh, I don't hit my driver in three wood good, but I hit my hybrids and everything else down bet, uh, a lot better to good. So therefore, what's the problem? The three, in that case, would be three wood and a driver. And why do they hit the hybrids better? They're mini woods. Yeah, exactly what I said, mini woods. They're built to be like irons, so they're shorter. So there's a good clue right there that, that if your driver is way longer than normal as compared to the rest of your clubs, it's very likely too long. Plus, most drivers today are made with 460 cc heads, which are way too big. Just the fact that the head is that big, and in many cases they have the weight of the, they have the weight of the club moved out toward, more towards in the head on towards the toe because golfers are swinging outside in. For most golfers, they're hitting the ball out near the toe, so they move the sweet spot out there. Well, the farther you move the sweet spot, the center of gravity of the club away from the toe away from the shaft, out towards the toe, the farther you get it away from the shaft, we call this the axis of rotation, around which the head's supposed to rotate to square up. Well, the farther you put that weight out there, the harder it is to make that, 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 that toe square up. Now, Doc once, once gave me the idea of, let's say I take, this is a box right here, okay? My shag bag is a box and it's got a lot of balls in here. If I stand here, and this is how you explain what we call MOI, if I just kick this a little bit over here, and I kick it with X amount of force, and I can measure how much the box, the box moved. Say it moved one inch. Well, if I pile more balls in here, and I put, and I kick it right there with the same force, it's not going to move as much because there's more weight, and I have to. The only way I can move it that inch is I'd have to increase the force applied against it. All right. So in many cases, what happens to us, just like just like this this box full of a lot of balls, as I put more balls in, it gets harder to to, to make to move it. If you, can't, if you can't increase any more club head speed to get that club to rotate quicker through impact, there's no way that you can square the club up and therefore, or the driver being a flatter face, the ball slides across the face, it gets left to right spin, there's your push, your block, and your slice. All wrapped into one thing. The head could be too long, uh, too big, and, and very likely the shaft is too long. Now, again, as the clubs get longer, and, and they actually get a little bit flatter with the driver, it gets harder to, to increase the speed with it. It's harder to swing a longer club faster than a shorter club. 
Now there's diminishing returns, whether longer clubs will very likely start swinging slower. I can get clubs shorter and shorter, but I can get the club so short that I don't have enough club to create enough speed to, to hit the distance either. So it's all about finding the optimum length for each one of you. And, and that's where you go when you go see a, a, one of our certified fitters. One, the first thing they do is they measure you. They have their system of measure you. They have you stand up straight. And most of our guys measure from about the wrist. Some might measure from the knuckle. Whatever it is, they got the chart that corresponds to that. That's going to tell them for whatever your whatever your length of your hands are from the ground standing up. They know what length clubs you have. And in most cases, most people today, I'd say probably 99% of all golfers, and, and in many cases even professional golfers, are playing with clubs too long. I play with a 43-inch driver. I'm five foot nine. Or I got a 35-inch sleeve. DJ's six foot three. And he plays with a 44-inch driver. He's 6'3", I'm 5'9". Okay, 44 is good for him. Today, most of the clubs that are only for sale to of all the top brand clubs in stores, in in, in whether it be golf shops, at clubs, or or, or 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 your box stores or whatever, they're all 45, 46 inches. Way too long, and the heads are way too big. Because again, this head, this head on this driver is is a 355 cc head. And, and we sell this one, and uh, although this one's hard to come by, this company stopped making it, but we got one now that's 360. And I think the smaller heads are absolutely better because the bigger heads don't, don't add anything to it. All a bigger face does is give you more room to miss the sweet spot and therefore hit a worse shot. And so again, it's very likely the driver. Another thing uh, that could be is, is that when you're swinging, you, you could be either A, aiming too far out, your, your alignment's out to the right and you're cutting across the ball, or very rarely we do see aiming too far left, which means you'd have to swing and fade it. Now normally when I do a lesson or a golf school and I see a person aiming to the right, most of them think they're aiming pretty good because I talk so much about alignment. But every time I see somebody aiming way to the left and hitting the big, and hitting some form of a banana ball, slicing to the right if they're a lefty, uh, playing right-handed that is, they, uh, and I say, uh, you're aiming to the left, and they always say, yeah, I know. I say, well, why do you aim way out to the left? It's supposed to be parallel left, not way out to the left. And they say, well, because I'm playing for the slice. And I ask them, do you want a slice? And they always say, no. I say, well, if you don't want a slice, you can't play for it, because if you play for it, you've got to have what you don't want. Get back into lining straight, lining up parallel left, which would be your body lined up, toes, knees, hips, shoulders, and eyes parallel left. So your alignment could be a problem. Another big issue could be, again, turning too much, swinging the club too long, and, you, and, and with all the other things that can happen which cause your club to come outside and in. And I've done, there's plenty of videos all over this, all over in uh, dailies that are here that you could just put anything to do with slice, uh, over the top, outside in, bad alignment, and, and they'll, they'll, they'll detail all the different formulas of what could happen to this. There's a search box up there on the home page, and just put it in that search box, and it'll, start, it'll put up a list of all the dailies that will reach the topic you put in there for. So there's plenty of topics here, but I'm going I'm to bet right here that it's probably the golf club. All right? So I think the first thing is to start where you, where, and, and eliminate what could be the number one problem, the club itself, the arrow. All right? So with all of that, I think you're going to find that, that, uh, if, if you swing and go to everything else, it's the arrow, not the Indian. So get, get, go get that club checked, and at the same time, when you go get it checked, they'll find out exactly what your length's supposed to be, and it'll probably be good to check the rest of your clubs and see if, if there's even things they can do there to improve, your, to improve your setup and swing. All right, well, that's it from the search for today, and I'll be talking with you all again soon.